We're good to go? Yeah. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the council meeting for um, 14th of March, 2023. Land acknowledgement, we acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional territory of Indigenous peoples who have been stewards of the land since time immemorial, and as such, we treat the land as plants, animals, stories, and people with honor and respect. Now, we will not have singing of all candidates, we still have technical issues, and could I ask for a moment of silence, please? Thank you. So good afternoon again. Although we are not finished with the winter season, the switch to daylight savings time reminds us that spring is just around the corner. This makes for an extremely busy time at the town of Bancroft with staff prepared to switch gears from winter to summer operations. It's also a time when municipalities analyze the previous year's financial performance and prepare and finalize budgets for the coming year. From all accounts, municipalities across the province are feeling the effects of substantial cost increases and supply chain issues that materialized over the last couple of years, with many dipping into reserves to fund operations, normally not a wise practice. The town of Bancroft is in the midst of the budget preparation process and analyzing all functions to bring the most affordable operating and capital budgets possible. Early indications point to an operating budget below the rate of inflation. However, our challenge lies with aging equipment and infrastructure and the resulting impact on our capital budget. We are taking extra time this year to fully evaluate all short and long term capital requirements with the draft budget scheduled to come before committee in mid April, followed shortly thereafter by our annual public presentation. Successive councils have recognized the need to offset inevitable cost increases by increasing tax revenues through new growth. This led to creation of our strategic economic development plan, making our future to serve as a blueprint to achieve our goals. The plan not only outlined community improvements to attract new growth, it also reinforced existing policies of no development charges and a property tax rebate program for new construction. These policies have proven very effective in attracting commitments for greatly needed housing and commercial expansion. Although recent costs and interest rate increases have posed challenges and delays for developers, progress is ongoing and we're optimistic on seeing shovels in the ground in 2023. On the community projects front, the Main Street Makeover project will resume in mid-April with completion scheduled prior to the busy summer season. Construction is nearing completion on our community wellness facility and gathering space at the arena with programming and operation, operational details still to be finalized. The library, community hub and housing complex remains on track. However, recognizing the great need for truly affordable housing in the region, we have submitted an application for a much larger percentage of the housing units in this project to be classified as affordable. We would we expect word in our application late summer. The town also continues to explore other innovative housing models, and we thank community members for spearheading these various initiatives. <clears throat> On the Hastings County front, <coughs> I will be attending budget meetings for joint services tomorrow, with the balance of budget meetings to be held next week. The county is also facing extreme cost increases to maintain vital community services and requires additional resources to handle the very large volume of development applications throughout the county. The county also recognizes the importance of growth within, within all member municipalities and is working closely with the Eastern Ontario Warden's Caucus on a major housing initiative in Eastern Ontario known as 7 and 7. That will include the town of Bancroft. More details will emerge as they become available. There are many challenges ahead, but also many opportunities that we plan to pursue. We continue to meet and state our case for additional and equitable funding with the upper levels of government. 
Bancroft is a regional service hub for North Hastings region, and our success will be autonomous for success throughout the region. Thank you. Okay, approval of the agenda be resolved that the Council of Corporation of the Town of Bancroft is hereby approved the open session agenda dated March 14, 2023, as presented. By mover and second, Council Riesel and Councilor Tracy McGibbon. All in favor, please. Thank you. Declaration between the interests and nature thereof. Seeing none. At this time, we will move into a public meeting. Uh, as required by the Planning Act, the purpose of the public meeting is to inform the public and hear representation in respect of the proposed bylaw for the purpose of rezoning lands within the municipality. Those persons or public bodies provide verbal submission in respect of the proposed bylaw will be requested to provide their names and address for recording in the minutes. Verbal submissions may be recorded in the minutes and will assist council in making a decision on the proposed bylaw. Be resolved that the Council of the Corporation of Town of Bancroft is hereby moving to public meeting pursuant to the Planning Act for the purpose of hearing support and or objections to the rezoning applications within the municipality. Let Uber and Secretary, Deputy Mayor and Councilor Kavanaugh, all in favor, please. So we have before us uh, zoning bylaw amendment application number 003. 2022. And at this time, I'm going to ask our planning coordinator, Rob K, to please proceed. You're muted. Yeah. Good afternoon, Your Worship, members of council, staff, and audience. Uh, so before you, we have an, a zoning bylaw amendment application as submitted by EcoView Consulting Services, Inc. on behalf of the owner FS Alliance Bancroft, Inc. for lands legally described as part of lots 1 and 2, concessions 16 and 17, and part of lot 73, West Hastings Road, Geographic Township of Faraday, now Tana Bancroft, County of Hastings. The purpose of the proposed amendment is to amend site-specific provisions for the following zones. The residential type one exception 17 zone, the residential type one exception 18 zone, and the residential type one exception 19 zone. The amendment seeks to increase the maximum building height from one story to two stories and to increase the maximum gross floor area from 140 square meters to 205 square meters. A planning justification report was prepared by EcoView Consulting Services, Inc. dated April 4th, 2022, and was submitted in support of the application. In addition, a revised phosphorus impact assessment, which was prepared by Tatum Engineering dated March 31st, 22, was also submitted to support the application. The subject lands are approximately 69 hectares in area, and the land subject to the proposed amendment are approximately 12.6 hectares in area and are accessed from Nicholas Drive and are in proximity to the Bancroft Ridge Golf Course and related residential development. The property was subject to development applications for draft plan of subdivision and a zoning bylaw amendment. The draft plan of subdivision was approved by County Council on March 25th, 2021, and the zoning bylaw amendment was passed by the Town of Bancroft on May 18th, 2021. A copy of the draft plan of subdivision is attached to the report. report. The approved draft plan of subdivision consists of the following, 105 residential lots for single detached dwellings, one private open space block, one private recreational amenity block, four stormwater blocks, and one road. The owner's agent, EcoView Consulting Services, Inc., filed the zoning bylaw amendment application in April of 2022. The required public meeting was scheduled for June 7th, 2022, and notice of the public meeting was circulated as prescribed by the Planning Act. 
At the public meeting, a request was received from the owner's agent to defer the application in order to make modifications to the application. It is noted by staff that the revised and updated phosphorus impact assessment submitted in support of the application found that the proposed amendment allowing two stories with a maximum gross floor area of 205 square meters on the 105 lots, each having a conventional septic system is not expected to increase the phosphorus concentrations in either Faraday Creek or the York River above the provincial water quality objective. The maximum gross floor area of 205 square meters for a dwelling provides for a maximum cumulative gross floor area of 21,461 square meters for the entire development. Following the deferral of the original zoning bylaw amendment application, the owner's agent submitted a proposal to municipal staff to amend the application to, to, to permit a maximum gross floor area of 246 square meters for a dwelling, though not to exceed the maximum cumulative gross floor area of 21,461 square meters for the entire development of 105 lots. To implement a variable gross floor area across the development, the owner's agent proposed applying site plan control to each lot and by including a separate provision in the site specific zoning bylaw, acknowledging that the maximum cumulative gross floor area of 21,461 square meters is not to be exceeded. However, upon review by the Hastings County Planning and Development Department, it was determined that the proposed approach to increase the maximum gross floor area without ex exceeding the maximum cumulative gross floor area of over the 105 lots did not conform to the policies of the Hastings County Official Plan or the Planning Act. Zoning bylaws implemented by the municipality must conform to the policies of the Official Plan and the Planning Act. County and staff concluded that a minor variance would be the appropriate planning tool to increase the maximum gross floor area on a lot within the development. As a result, the owner's agent decided to go forward with the application as originally submitted. However, a warning clause is to be implemented through a subdivision amending agreement between the owner and the municipality. The warning clause will recognize that should an owner of a lot within the plan seek a minor variance to increase the maximum gross floor area, that such increase shall not exceed 246 square meters and that the maximum cumulative gross floor area for all dwellings on all lots within the plan shall not exceed a total of 21,461 square meters. The warning clause will also provide that a record of the maximum cumulative gross floor area shall be kept and shall be presented to the municipality with all minor variance applications to increase the maximum gross floor area on the plan to ensure that no application is made that which would cause the maximum gross floor, cumulative gross floor <coughs> area to exceed the maximum as informed by the phosphorus impact assessment. Notice of the warning clause shall be provided in each agreement of purchase and sale of a lot within the plan. The subdivision amendment agreement is to be uh, to implement the warning clause is being drafted and will be brought forward to a future meeting of council for consideration. So the purpose of the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is to amend special provisions within the residential type one exception 17 zone, the residential type one exception 18 zone and the residential type one exception 19 zone. The special provisions to be amended are the maximum building height and the maximum gross floor area. As previously mentioned, the maximum building height is to be increased from one story to two stories. It is noted that in the residential type one zone, the maximum building height for a single detached dwelling is 11 meters, which is approximately three stories. The maximum gross floor area for a dwelling is to be increased from 140 square meters to 205 square meters. Section 4.91 of the zoning bylaw provides a minimum gross floor area of 70.3 square meters for a single detached dwelling. The effect of the proposed amendment will provide more flexibility in housing styles to satisfy market demands. 
The notice of public meeting was circulated as prescribed by the Planning Act. The County of Hastings planning staff have offered no objection to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment and to date no other written submissions in respect of the proposed amendment have been received. The bylaw to amend the Town of Bancroft's comprehensive zoning bylaw has been drafted with support uh, from the applicant's agent as well as from the County of Hastings uh, planning and development department and is on today's agenda for consideration by council. It, it is staff's opinion that the application for the amendment is in conformity with applicable land use pol policies and represents good land use planning. Therefore, staff recommend that the proposed zoning bylaw amendment application be approved. The owner's agent is um, here today and also has a presentation to make to council. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. So I'm assuming it's uh, Derek from EcoView. The floor is yours, Derek. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can. Wonderful. Um, is it possible to share my screen? Yes. Okay, great. All righty. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Wonderful. Thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks so much, Robin, for providing a very uh, detailed overview of the previous uh, and current applications. Um, I'm hoping that maybe through a quick presentation that I can provide a little bit more of a, a visual review of the site and, and provide some more context in case uh, anyone has any questions. So the site, as Robin has mentioned, is uh, the developable area is upwards of 13 hectares in an area of uh, 69 hectares overall within the parcel of land. It's uh, along Nicholas Drive, uh, north of the Bancroft Ridge Golf Club uh, in the town of Bancroft itself. Uh, Hastings Heritage Trail uh, demarcates the site to the west. Uh, York R River is to the east of the site. Um, and then Faraday Creek uh, is to the north of the proposed uh, zoning bylaw area. Uh, the topography of the site is generally flat with sandy soils, which is typical of uh, York Drive with the exception of the ravine bluff that's adjacent to Faraday Creek and the York River. Uh, it's approximately 130 meters from the Bancroft Community Airport property just to the uh, southwest and uh, residential uses uh, across the York River to the east uh, lie to the east of the York River, and then the lands west of the Heritage Trail are largely undeveloped. Uh, the lands that include the Faraday Creek are actually uh, provincially significant wetland, as you can see within the green hatching on this map. The subject property is designated urban, uh, shown in Schedule OPA within the official plan of the County of Hastings, and the subject lands are situated within the urban community secondary plan or UCSP. Uh, it's designated residential uh, in, sorry, residential special development policy within the UCSP, uh, which permits for residential use um, as pre previously provided with uh, the previous zoning bylaw amendment. Uh, as you can see here, there are the four specific zones uh, that are affected uh, by this zoning bylaw amendment. And just to provide a little bit more context, uh, in terms of the chronology of these applications. So in 2021, as mentioned, the plan of subdivision and zoning bylaw amendments to rezone the subject lands were approved. Uh, site specific standards included that uh, limitation of height and gross floor area to one story uh, and 1,500 square feet, respectively. Uh, ownership had changed hands in 2022 to Alliance Homes, uh, and the owner wishes to increase the zoning regulations uh, to, to 2,200 square feet, excuse me, or 205 square meters, and to two stories uh, to permit for that accommodation of a wider variety of housing models and sizes to accommodate for uh, various uh, household sizes. So first I'll quickly review uh, the policy overview and then I'll go into uh, the phosphorus impact assessment in more detail. Uh, these I recognize these slides are a little bit more text heavy, so hopefully I, I won't bore you all too much with this. Um, so just to summarize, the principle of development has previously been established within the previous Planning Act applications. The 105 lots were previously approved um, and this application doesn't necessarily change that. 
EcoView understands that the proposed development is consistent with section 1.6.6 of the provincial policy statement, um, where partial services, including any combination of municipal private water and municipal private sewer may be permitted uh, within settlement areas to allow for infilling and minor rounding of existing development on partial services, provided that the site conditions are suitable for the long-term provision of those services with no negative impacts. And that was, you know, ostensibly the whole reason for the updated uh, phosphorus impact assessment, which I'll go into on the next slide. Uh, so as previously demonstrated, uh, through the supporting uh, hydrogeological and geotechnical reports submitted with the previous uh, zoning bylaw amendment and plan of subdivision applications, uh, nitrates could be adequately attenuated on site through the implementation of a nitrate uh, reduction technology uh, to bring the concentration of nitrates to a level consistent with uh, MECP requirements, as well as a combination of individual private septic systems and municipally piped water could be accommodated, which was previously confirmed by the Town of Bancroft. Uh, it's also outlined within uh, section 2.2.4.8 of the Urban Community Secondary Plan that it is permitted. So it's EcoView's opinion that the proposed development meets the intent uh, and conforms to the policies of the County of, the County of Hastings official plan and the urban community secondary plan, as the subject property is located within phase two of the servicing plan, which is permitted to have no municipal services or partial services uh, in accordance, if they're developed in accordance with the policies of the plan. Uh, and then, as Robin had mentioned, the residential type one R zone in the town of Bancroft uh, zoning bylaw permits for a height limit of 11 meters, uh, uh, which is approximately three stories and as of right does not limit the GFA. So it's our understanding that the proposed changes to the development standards meets the intent and complies with the general standards of the R1 zone. So now I'll go a little bit into the details of the phosphorus impact assessment. Um, back in March of 2020, uh, peer comments, peer review comments were provided by Cambium Incorporated to the senior planner of Hastings County, um, which reviewed the previous hydrogeological and nitrate dilution analysis in support of those previous applications and found kind of four primary concerns that were to be addressed within uh, the previous zoning bylaw amendment and plan of subdivisions. Uh, and so when that uh, assessment, the phosphorus assessment was revised and reviewed, it incorporated and accounted for those four primary concerns of which I'll go into now. So the first was because the site was to be serviced with municipal water and private septic systems, uh, the groundwater was understood to flow from the subdivision towards Faraday Creek. And as such, the concern that the potential contamination of the groundwater towards Faraday Creek was by phosphorus and not by nitrate itself. So the phosphorus impact assessment completed by Tatham focused its analysis on the impacts relating to the increased building area of each individual unit, uh, primarily the impacts that related to the proposed private individual septic systems for each lot. And within the study, it was estimated that the sewage flow uh, was increased from 1,000 litres today to 2,100 litres uh, per day. And within the peer review, it was stipulated that the provincial surface water limit for phosphorus was 20 micrograms uh, per liter, uh, which can also be expressed as 0 0.02 milligrams per liter. Uh, so Tatham had gone back to the environment, uh, the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks, uh, which was confirmed that the um, surface water uh, limit was actually 0 0.03 uh, milligrams per liter or 30 micrograms per liter. Uh, so there's no Ontario drinking water standard uh, specifically or uh, provincial water quality objective for the total phosphorus or dissolved phosphorus concentrations in the groundwater. But there is concern that the groundwater obviously with high, high phosphorus content discharging into Faraday Creek uh, or the York River could impact that sur the surface water quality itself. Uh, third, if Faraday Creek was used as the groundwater divide, uh, the portion of the land north of the creek should not be used in any dilution calculations for either nitrate or phosphorus as it would result in an overestimation of dilution potential. However, in the analysis, it was found that the groundwater divide was determined to be located along Bancroft Ridge Drive, uh, and as such, it wasn't Faraday Creek, so that wasn't a concern. Uh, and then based on that groundwater divide, the consultant would have to provide an explanation for the high existing phosphorus concentrations and determine if, when, and how they would be abated. Uh, and within the phosphorus impact analysis, it was determined that the fertilizers containing phosphorus <laughs> that were applied to the 12th and 13th holes of the, of the golf course uh, 
had the potential to impact the phosphorus concentrations in the groundwater at the site. Uh, the decline in the groundwater uh, concentrations was believed to be the result of the ceasing of the use of those fertilizers applied to those holes, and as such, uh, the dilution is expected to continue. So the overall findings of the phosphorus impact assessment were that uh, the proposed development uh, consisting of 105 lots with two-story dwellings uh, was not expected to increase the total phosphorus concentrations in either Faraday Creek or the York River above that provincial quality objective. Uh, and as previously mentioned, uh, that lot flow increase for it was estimated at 1,000 liters today to 2,100 liters uh, per day. The monthly sampling between uh, occurred between April and September of, for a period of six months and conduct, were conducted at five locations. Two were along Faraday Creek and three were along York River. Uh, they were inferred to be influenced by groundwater inflow from the site and th they found that none of the surface water samples collected exceeded that 0 0.03 milligrams per liter threshold. Groundwater samples showed a decline in the dissolved phosphorus concentration over time. The total phosphorus concentrations uh, in the York River, River were not completed since the Faraday Creek had a higher total concentration and lower flows uh, available for dilution. So it was understood that the total phosphorus concentrations in the York River would be less than the Faraday Creek um, and therefore even lower than that PWQO. Phosphorus loading from the stormwater runoff uh, during say a spring freshet or the uh, a heavy rainfall event uh, was not considered. Uh, since the higher than average flows in Faraday Creek and York River result would result in an increase in the dilution itself. Uh, in other words, the discharge from the stormwater management pond would be directed to the York River as it has larger flows for dilution. The phosphorus dilution calculations estimated a post uh, development average in the Faraday Creek of 0 0.10 milligrams per liter or 10 micrograms per liter. Again, that's lower than the PWQO. Uh, since the site specifically is on Precambrian bedrock, future septic systems would be located within non-calcareous soils, and then as such, we're expected to benefit from a 97% phosphorus retainment in, in the soil itself. Uh, otherwise, in different kinds of soils, only 45% would be retained within the proximal plume of the individual systems. Um, so as such, it was estimated that the post-development average would be 0 0.03 uh, micrograms per liter, which is the uh, objective level. Uh, and any exceedance, if it were to occur uh, in Faraday Creek, would affect only a very short section of the watercourse as the creek discharges into the York River, where a much larger scale dilution would occur. So that concludes my portion of the presentation. Um, I'm happy to field any questions. Thank you, Derek. Do any members of council have questions for either Derek or for uh, Robin? Councilor I'm, uh, I'm just curious to know. Uh, the airport has been considered in the height change. Is that going to impact the airport in any way? That will be directed to Robin. I think. So, they, just for your information, that on Nicholas Drive right now, yeah. uh, there is two story dwellings already, uh, which is an area closer to the airport. Anyone else? Okay. Okay, thank you, Eric and Robin. I don't see any other questions. So at this time, we'll call for public input. If a person of the public body does not make verbal submissions at the public meeting or make written submissions to council or the bylaws pass, the person of public body may not be added as part of the hearing of an appeal before the Imperial Land Tribunal unless in the opinion of the tribunal there are reasonable grounds to do so. So, uh, Robin, you mentioned there are no written submissions in opposition. The final amendment. That is correct. There were no written submissions received in object in opposition to the proposed amendment. I don't believe we have anybody online. Uh, we, no, okay, so obviously then there'd be no verbal submissions in, op in opposition. Uh, and written submissions in support have already been presented. And again, there'd be no uh, verbal submissions in support since nobody else is online. So this time we would adjourn from the public meeting. Be resolved the Council of Corporation Town and Bank Farm is hereby adjourned from a public meeting and reconvene the regular uh, meeting of Council. Can I have a mover and a second around that? Councillor Miles and Councillor Barry McGibbon. All in favor, please. Thank you.
Planning decision following the public meeting, council's decision to refuse or pass an application to amend the zoning bylaw is to include a brief explanation of the effect of any that the written and verbal submissions relating to the application had on the decision. So zoning bylaw amendment application number 003-2022 to be resolved at the Council of Corporation of Town of Bancroft is hereby approved the zoning bylaw amendment application number 003-2022 to rezone lands legally described as part of lots one and two in sessions 16 and 17 and part of lot 73 west of Hastings Road, Geographic Township of Parity, Town of Bancroft, County of Hastings to amend the maximum height and maximum gross floor area uh, dwelling in the residential type one exception 17 zone, residential type one exception 18 zone, and residential type one exception 19 zone. Could I have a mover and a second and a counselor Eastman and Deputy Mayor? All in favor, please. So passes. Thank you, everyone. The motion has passed. I think we're good. So uh, this time we have a presentation uh, from Dwayne Forth of Veolia. It is a 2022 annual water report. Uh, so uh, motion on the table before Dwayne does his presentation be dissolved. The Council of Corporation of Town of Bancroft hereby receiving file the 2022 water report as presented by the mover and the second piece, Councilor Barry McGibbon, Tracy McGibbon. So, Dwayne, the floor yes. is yours. How are you? I'm, gonna sh I'm good. How are everybody there? Good, thank you. Figure out how to share my screen here. Can you see that? I don't see a lot. Oh, I just actually it. Now we see it. Okay, good. All right, thank you. So the uh, water report is in front of you, um, and I think uh, you've probably all seen it, or if not, you'll see it right now. Um, the uh, we didn't have a lot of real big issues at the water plant in 2022. We did change the media on filter number one or train number one, whichever you, how you prefer. Um, and that was a capital project that we did ourselves. And uh, we didn't, uh, we didn't have, we had for the, for the most part, the, the new filter media works, works very well. But we have an, an issue with the backwashing system at the water plant. And that, uh, as you can see here by total raw water treated, 373,900 cubic meters for the year, 70,000 more cubic meters in 2022 than in 2021. Um, so, and most of that was just because of backwash issues that we had at the facility. Um, uh, after we changed the media, it got better. The media was changed in March, so you could see a slow decline there. Um, there and then it picked up again in October, and we had some issues in late uh, October or late September, early October again for the media, and it just wasn't cleaning itself. And uh, so we had an expert come in and help us with that, and uh, we've cor pretty much corrected a lot of the issues. And uh, we're hoping that 2023 will be a better year for raw water treatment. So, um, for the treated water supply to the municipality, we were only 800 cubic meters more than in 2021. So, pretty much consistent year from year to year on the treated water. So, we didn't, uh, we didn't. So, all of that water that the difference is, is, is water loss at the facility itself, going to backwash and and for other things like cleaning the tanks and, and that sort of thing. So filters perform really well, especially after the uh, 
after the re replacement on train one. And uh, as you can see here by the turbidity in train one, after things settled down after April, May, uh, things really went, really dropped and, uh, con and you know, the turbidity really, the peak turbidities really dropped, which is a good thing. And on filter two, uh, we had a peak issue in, in May, but we corrected that um, and uh, fixed all that up. And uh, we uh, see the drop there after May and the filter to be done on train, train two. Um, we changed the equipment at the uh, tower. The tower is the secondary feed point for hypochlorite into the system. And we changed the equipment uh, to be get better control of the hypochlorite going into the tower and out of the tower. Previous to the equipment change, the chlorine pump ran all the time. So people that were using water off of the tower up in up near the, the public school area, all of that area, probably had a strong chlorine odor and, a, and maybe even a strong chlorine taste uh, because we could not control the chlorine at that time. But now we're controlling the chlorine with some new equipment that we installed in August. And the peak chlorine um, is still reaching the 499, but it's not staying up um, for a long period of time. We have set points of in there set at two milligrams per liter. So uh, basically we, we are controlling the chlorine feed now. And uh, I actually in my home, which, and I live up there, I don't smell the chlorine nor taste it anymore. So uh, it's a, a positive thing. Uh, and so we're not saving a whole lot of chlorine by doing this, but we are saving the aesthetics, the, the, the smell and the taste, which really people really judge a lot um, by that. Uh, residual management. Um, most of the residuals from the water plant are chemical sludge. Over 90% of the sludge that uh, that's in the uh, in the backwash tanks is uh, is chemical sludge. So, um, and we pump that out, and uh, we actually bring it down to the wastewater plant and put it into the septosh facility, and it pumps slowly into the plant. And uh, it actually helps with the phosphorus removal here at the wastewater plant. Um, suspended solids is the effluent from the backwash tanks that goes out to the little creek um, nearby. So uh, the average, the certificate of approval, if that's what you want to call it, or a water permit, only allows for an average of 25 milligrams per liter per year. And we had an average of 13 in 2022 and an average of 10 in 2021. So we're well below the, the limits. Chemical consumption, it's pretty consistent from year to year, but uh, 2022, because of the large amount of raw water um, that we had to treat because of the backwash issues, we were up in all categories, all chemicals were up. The, uh, the major chemical up was the uh, coagulant and flocculator for, for the facility. So in 2021, this number here was 17.1, as opposed to the 18.2 it is in 2022. We're always trying to reduce our chemical usage because nobody likes to drink chemicals, of course. So uh, we're always trying to reduce it and optimize the usage of chemicals. Maintenance summaries are here. Um, 
course, we do our routine maintenance and uh, regular maintenance uh, stuff we have on schedules. Um, there are, uh, we had distribution maintenance. We did a lot of work to a lot of hydrants in 2022, as you can see the list there. And each year we typically have quite a handful of uh, hydrants to repair. The winter um, plays a big, has a big role on the condition of the hydrants. Um, there's one thing about hydrants that we could uh, talk about and that is uh, maybe getting a summer student to paint them uh, and not, maybe not in 2023, but plan for 2024. We did some uh, curb stop maintenance as well. And uh, you'll see a month by month uh, non-routine maintenance stuff um, here as well. Um, purchases in uh, 2022 included a jar testers and the filter media for train one, um, the chlorine analyzer and pump for the standpipe, um, so, some clear well inspections and tower inspections. And they proved to be quite informative and I'm sure you've already heard about that, but, but uh, the general manager has that information and we'll pass that on to you if you need it. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's uh, some scary information in that, so. Replace the skater computers uh, at the, the water plant. And we have a proposed capital plan attached as well for, the, for now and for the future. No adverse water quality incidents in 2022, but, which is very good. And uh, the report also includes uh, an attachment for the ministry inspection from 2021 to 2022. And that is my report. Any questions? Any questions, sir? Uh, Councilor Miles. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Dwayne, um, when I look at the uh, proposed capital plan, yes. uh, I am, and we uh, assuming it all actually, you know, is reasonable. Are there some things that have higher priority than others? And uh, is there a way for us to delineate that? Um, the highest priority item is the standpipe. It uh, needs to be refurbished and replaced within, I would say, three to five years. Okay. Um, and everything else on the list is just as it happens or? Uh, well, everything on the list is important, but uh, it, it will be, um, it's all a matter of, the funds that are available and basically what I can do with the funds that are available. And I fit the projects in one at a time. Um, I do it that way only because um, there's not a whole lot of funds to do many projects. So I try and do as many of the smaller ones as I can and uh, we'll do the bigger ones as they go. Now, um, the generator work is important. Uh, we got to, they are not, they are, they're no longer in compliance generators. So in order for us to get them legally filled with fuel, we have to have new certificates um, telling us that they're, that they're in compliance. Um, and that was on the books for a couple years ago, but things sort of got sidelined and uh, we'll have to revisit that again with uh, Andra, Pat and Wendelin. Thank you. Anyone else? So just a couple of points here. Um, so you did re refer to the standpipe or refer to replace the tower. That's that very large number that everybody sees there. From that's made between 2.5 and 3.5 million. The, other, the only other question I really had, Wayne, was on the cast iron pipe replacement program. Um, can you refresh my memory how much of that is there actually is? Are you aware of that? Pardon me? I don't, I don't think there is actually a program, is there? Okay, it, it says it right here, cast iron replacement program. Yeah, that's just, that's just my wording. Um, okay. There should be, 
in in my own opinion, there should be some sort of program that uh, addresses the cast iron pipe replacement program. As you know, or maybe not know, we've already had four breaks this year, and two of them have been on the cast iron piping. Uh, the other three have been uh, the other three have been service leaks, but uh, we've had two two cast iron pipe breaks already, and two of them were on uh, Flint. So. So that's part of the area that needs to be addressed. And if Anyone else with any questions? And what is the answer? How many, approximately how many meters? Um, I'm not sure. I guess I forgot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, we have hundreds of meters to replace. Uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah you, it's it's very. It's going to take you. A, it's going to take a long time to replace and a lot of funds. So. Hopefully the government's generous at some point. Uh, Mayor. Do you have any idea how old those pipes are? Um, I, how long, how old is Flint Street? <laughs> how, how, old is, how old is the hospital area? You know, all that. 70 years. 70 years. 70? That's old. That's older. That's older than me. <laughs> yeah. So that's 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 what we look at. I mean, we over the last two summers we've uh, replaced the uh, Bridge Street West booster station uh, equipment, the pumps, the piping, the valves, and the amount of corrosion that was internal to those pipes and valves was tremendous. You have a, an eight inch pipe down to about four inches. So that's the kind of thing that you're faced with with, all, with these pipes. Okay. I know a couple of years ago, we talked about like the reline program. Yeah, relining is a possibility if you can, uh, if you can, uh, remove all of the rust that's within the pipes itself. I mean, you, you don't want to reline a pipe that's already uh, shrunk down to four inches if it's an eight inch pipe. I thought I was under the impression that they clean that and line it. They could, they certainly could try. They certainly could try. They'll probably take in some sort of big file type, screw type thing to go through the pipes and see if they can get it off. Um, but when you try, when you start doing that, yeah, um, chances of damaging the pipe and breaking it is far greater. Anybody else? Okay, thank you, Dwayne. Uh, the motion's already on the floor. The report, all in favor, please. So passed, thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks, man. Item nine, organizational update, uh, verbal update from the general manager. Good afternoon, Council, members of the public. Um, just a few little things. So in the next few weeks, we've been working, the last few weeks, we've been working hard to get our summer student job descriptions up to date. So you're going to see those about in the next week or two so that we can recruit our summer staff. Um, as Mayor Jenkins alluded to, the arena renovations are well underway um, and we're getting into more of the detailed planning now. So we're excited to start to soon be able to share some of that with all of you. Um, I'd like to also welcome our new canteen operators for the month. The first band Crop Scouts have taken over the operation of the canteen for the final month of um, arena operations. Uh, so we're thrilled to have them on board and appreciate them coming on with short notice and filling that gap for us. Uh, also, as Mayor Jenkins mentioned, we've been staff have been meeting with representatives to do some preliminary budget preparation. Um, so we are hoping to bring forward a public uh, committee that will special meeting in April uh, to present that budget for comment and then to follow that up with a council meeting shortly thereafter. And then finally, I do want to give everyone an update on the water control structure. Um, so I'm happy to report um, that the water in the river will start to rise again today. The uh, emergency repairs are well underway and are completed to the point where it is safe uh, to put the water back in the river. 
Um, so that will start happening this afternoon and will happen gradually over the next several days. So I just encourage everyone to use caution around the river uh, because the flows will be higher and, and um, things will be slippery from being exposed for the last couple of weeks. And that's about it. Thank you. Any questions for John Andrew? Seeing that, motion to approve the rural report. Councilor Tracy, you give in. Councilor Kavanaugh, all in favor, please. Thank you. I have 10 minutes of previous session to resolve the Council Corporation of Town Bank. I was hereby approved the minutes of the special meeting of Council held on February 28, 2023, as presented by a mover and a seconder on that. Please. Councilor Miles and seconded by Councilor Kavanaugh. All in favor, please. So pass in. Uh, minutes of standing committees, we committee the whole. It resolved that Council of Corpus Town of Bancroft is hereby approved the minutes of committee the whole meeting held on February 28, 2023, as presented. I move our secondary, please. Councilor Gray, Councilor uh, Deputy Mayor. All in favor, please. Thank you. We resolve the Council Corporation of Town of Bancroft accepts the recommendation of the committee of the whole. And hereby direct staff to continue working on the employment lands project. Could I have a move in a second, please? Councillor Miles, Councillor Eastman. You want to give us a, a little bit of a background on exactly what that is? So, the employment lands uh, project is very similar to what we did with our downtown uh, rezoning project a few years ago. So, it identifies areas in the town that could be suitable for employment development, so industrial or and commercial development, or some combination of the two. It clarifies the things that can happen in those areas with the intent of employment being the focus of the activity, and provides a little bit um, of a broader uh, interpretation of what could happen there, which will open opportunities for developers uh, who may want to come to town with businesses, whether they be commercial or industrial, uh, and opens up some <coughs> uh, that may not otherwise have been considered in our previous zoning or in our existing zoning uh, to allow for that purpose. Thank you. Any questions? All in favor, please. So pass. Thank you. I am being thank you for your safety and well being. Um, I know we haven't had a meeting yet, I believe, but any comments uh, that we were receiving that going? You know, we, we had a very first meeting the end of the month. Okay. And we uh, notified the folks there on the team. Great. Looking forward to that. Good. Thank you. Uh, item 12, minutes of local boards, front committees, and verbal updates. I made Bangkok business improvement in that area. Um, the result of the Council of Corporation of Town of Bancroft hereby received and filed a minute for the January 26, 2023, and February 23, 2023 Bancroft Business Preliminary Board Meeting as presented. We'll move that, Councillor uh, yes. Kavanaugh. Seconder, please. Councillor Eastman, would you like to expand or talk on it? Never, never, also an opportunity. <laughs> The uh, flower program is going ahead for the summer. We're uh, waiting for the town to give us some idea of how the flowers will unfold on the main streets. And, uh, no pun intended. No pun intended. Okay. We've accommodated, um, we think, by adding uh, flowers to the bridges if we have, because we're not sure that the construction of the main street will finish and they will put those flowers on the main street. So we keep Tuned. Stay tuned. Is there an offer like we're expecting to be done by the end of June? <laughs> is there a uh, potential to uh, reallocate them later? Yes, there would be. Because I think it'd be nice to get it. It's rather difficult because of. Yes, let's say that it, yeah. it would be nice to get it done by the end of June. How well they're received, and how soon the construction actually finishes, as opposed to where it might be finished. I think it's pretty certain it will be done by that time. Okay. And then there won't be any opportunity to do any of the breeding that's within the plan, probably until the fall. So uh, it'd be nice to probably have something on the streets once it's in. Well, without without that information, we were just trying to get well, if this happens, then this would happen. If this happens, so we're hoping in fact that. 
that happens, then there would be some possibility that we could get the kind of one of the other things that was discussed, but it has to do with downtown redevelopment, but is traditionally in Bangkok in the history of it, there has always been the opportunity to have a banner across the main street. So we were wondering if in any of the plans there is an opportunity to have a pole on either side of the street. There used to be poles, but they never matched up. Just just to know if there was well up in the if that's a possibility that would be great. To advertise things like our events and like even the opening of the library or whatever it was for the for the public generally. Uh, there is a project underway to put QR codes on as many of the artwork uh, pieces as we can so that people can activate information on those uh, uh, on the artwork that's put up around town. Um, we're working diligently with the staff to get the Christmas decorations down because we're asked all to get of that and uh, get that part of it done in preparation. So, are there any other questions? Where does the QR take people? Is it to a site that's already in place? Or is yeah, it something completely new? For no, it would be uh, like on the actual artwork. I think that then you could just tap and see who the artist was when it was put together. But again, we could move into the realm of possibility the tours instead of going into the museum. So all of that would be there at the museum for people to access as well. Because we're hoping to work cooperatively with the BIA and the other agencies. All in favor. So fast, thank you. Item B, Eastern Ontario Trails Alliance. We resolve that the Council Corporation Town of Van Property by receiving final minutes of the October 6, 2022 Eastern Ontario Trails Alliance board meeting. That was a long time ago. Before your time, I believe you uh, yeah, Yes, I. But I will let you move this anyway to get it on the table. So, and a second or two. Um, now, you have been to a couple of meetings. I think I've been to the one last month again, just last week. Last week there. So, anything you want to uh, sort of expand on before it hits the minutes? Yes, yeah, something that affects us. Uh, there, one of the projects to put money into this year is the bridge across Lenny from the uh, trail over to the park. Right. Uh, and uh, they didn't have a proper name to contact. Or now they do, or as we sent on. <laughs> so, um, and, and that'd be uh, found out the contact there. So, um, I'm disappointed, I guess, that the uh, minutes, at least from the February meeting, is not here. But anyway, that's, that's I'm not going to look into that, but I can't get a little quicker. Yeah. Um, just pointing out that the Trail Alliance, Eastern Trail Trail Alliance, has a total expenditure every year of 1.4 million dollars so it's it's they do a lot of work yeah. of course they cover a lot of territory i mean all of when they say eastern ontario uh except for we get into uh carlton the manor counties to the east of us everything everything west of that right up right up into the lindsay area for example the yeah. trails uh, and they're really big down, of course, along the Prince system, etc. But it, but it's uh, it's quite it's quite the organization in so much that how much how much they impact the local economies. And uh, one of the the things they we they run across some some issues every once in a while. And there is, for example, there's a, a Northern Stoneville Club adjacent to us here in town. That refuses to allow four wheelers on their trip, their section of trails from November 15th to April 1st. And uh, the trail allowance has put forth a proposal and, and submission uh, just recently that wonders have changed, obviously. Um, the seasons have changed. Like, for example, this year we didn't get a first snowfall until Christmas. I've gone next week. But um, a lot of the four wheelers are complaining about that. Um, a lot of four wheelers with that closure cannot get into some of the hunt camps, you know, during the season. So again, it's it's something to look into and hopefully that can be worked out. Um, but anyway, I think 
think historically the, the issue there used to be insurance because the OFSC, the Federal Federation Home Bill Clubs, insurance kicked in and did not cover that. So whether that's still an issue or not, I don't know. But that was historically an issue going back. If it's a uh, crown land, the crown land that uh, superseded, so you can access the property. But as you aware, I'm <laughs> sure. As you aware, there's 95% crown land up there that we're using. What is that? 5% the connecting links. You know, that, that's private or controlled by certain associations that, that are under the stigma. Of course, you can't get from point A to point B unless you cross this. The, the other picture that we're seeing around is municipalities not having a backbone to say this was a settlement road, this was a, an actual right of way into a property. They don't want that ownership, which I understand, but it's killing a lot of these trail systems because that was the, the original settlement trail or road into that property, and, and then they walked away from it. People are putting gates on it. And uh, it's creating a lot of problems. So, George, can we just go back a minute on the uh, uh, this special grant that they received, which I heard about before? My initial understanding was uh, that it had to be spent by the end of March, but obviously that mustn't be the, the case. The one that they're looking at from Millennium Bridge. So, um, so ha they have identified Millennium Bridge, and they do plan on exploring or going ahead. What, what's the status? Going ahead. We're going ahead. Yeah. Oh, going okay. ahead. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's good news. But they will uh, obviously work through the town. Yes. Here uh, again, it's been not not to repeat myself, but it's been lack of trying to get a hold of somebody, and uh, we, we've got to rectify that now. So. Okay. Uh, Councillor. Yeah. Good. We uh, uh, partnered with the uh, Trail Alliance in the town. We put uh, recycled asphalt on the rail bed over the last couple of years, and it's done a great job of dust suppression. And uh, uh, but there are a few spots now that are starting to wear out, and uh, it's something that needs to, to be addressed because some of the potholes. Are huge and it can't create it. So, what needs to have is more recycled asphalt applied and create enough into the trail. And it's, uh, it wouldn't take too much, but I think it's something that needs to be looked at because uh, we've got a situation that's going to create an accident if we don't. So, it's uh, something that uh, we should put on the radar. Yes, it can. Somehow get it to me, that can be too. Okay. Sure. <coughs> Uh, any questions? All in favor, please. So pass, thank you. Uh, North Hastings Public Library. Councilor Miles, do you have anything you would like to say? Um, I think I did a pretty decent update at the committee of the whole because that's sort of where the meeting with the library fits and sort of between us and between <laughs> the whole. The general so, public. Fair enough. Um, uh, the library has uh, sort of two uh, pieces that we're working on right now a big review of policy and procedure and sort of uh, a good look at some things that need to be updated. It's a really great really thing, but they created a really good document for what needs to, what will be done for the next little bit, and they will be creating a small committee to do that. Um, I think the most important thing that's happened recently with the library is the inspirational place group has now has the umbrella of the library board. So the inspirational group is going to become a committee within the library board. That provides them with some assurance, and it also that's provides. That's the fundraising effort. That's the fundraising effort. Yeah, they're called the Inspirational Place, right. and um, then they will have somebody to report to, and a way, uh, sort of some. They sort of they were great. They'd gone out. They raised some money, but they didn't really have structure. Uh, they didn't have policies. They didn't have procedures. They didn't have reporting. They were doing, you know, working very hard. But this gives them some protection make sure that their group is now um, governed and it's going to be governed by the library board. Um, Kim was off to a conference recently and uh, just like you sent me something recently today or yesterday regarding the digital content of our libraries as uh, Kim reported it's a big piece of what goes on with the libraries 
and uh, we'll, we'll work hard to keep up with that. That was that an executive license? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where, I mean, remote municipalities are looking for more digital access. Yeah. The problem is, the digital book is like two or three times They're more expensive than a hard copy book. So they're looking for funding from other levels. So, uh, and we will meet again in a couple of weeks, but those are the two big things that were on there. It was um, the policy piece and uh, giving an umbrella to the inspiration place. Thank you. We will roll right from there to the North Nations Economic Development Committee. So, we'll let you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, the uh, Economic Development Committee, um, first of all, the county has applied for a red grant that will allow for vacant business buildings. So if we have a storefront that's sitting vacant, they've applied to get some funding that you could apply to the county and they will come up and do some fun things on your window, uh, either to attract business or to at least give it some activity so it doesn't look so boring, so bland. And they, uh, I think it's like an applique, they build it up, they work with the, the property owner, looking to attract businesses, maybe what kind of thing they want there, maybe do something colorful. Uh, but that uh, they've applied for the grant. If we get that, it will be for the county of Hastings. And if you have an empty storefront, you apply with them. They will come and work with you to have some type, some type of a display up. Um, <laughs> we are going to be drafting a letter. The letter is going, to, is going to be reviewed once by the committee. But we've been instructed to draft a letter uh, to institute a conversation about amalgamation. Um, and we were made aware that the mayors met recently and there is this sort of conversation swirling. Um, there is some understanding that the province might eventually force us into this type of action. Nobody's doing that for sure, but it might happen. And we know that things are getting more and more expensive everywhere we look. And, our, and what might have been a really un, unimaginable conversation eight years ago all of a sudden has a little bit of traction because our small municipalities are having just as many struggles as we are. So is there, so the, from, an, from an economic standpoint and from a business growth standpoint, the economic, you know, NHEDC just sees there's some value in having a conversation. So we will be drafting a letter, forwarding it to the county, forwarding it to all of the mayors, forwarding it to um, Mr. Brise, and uh, just saying we would be in support of having a conversation, um, uh, engaging with all of the municipalities, maybe spearheading if we were asked to do something like that from an economic standpoint. And um, uh, very early stages, we don't have a letter together, but we're hoping it will be on our next agenda. We have a small group that's going to draft the letter, it will go in front of the committees, and then it will be sent out to everybody. And it's merely a letter of support saying, this is something we think we should see happen. Let's see if we can find some money and uh, have someone provide us some information as to whether or not it's a viable option. So, just as an addendum to that, going back to the mayor's meeting, which I believe was in February, which is somewhere around there, uh, that was convened by Mr. Bruce. Uh, and the purpose of that meeting was to just to hear everybody's viewpoint on uh, what the situation was. To talk about potential shared services and the amalgamation discussion that did come up at that point in time. Again, nobody uh, expressed yay or nay, uh, but the comment was made that uh, a thorough sort of independent investigation would be required um, and put in a verbal request to see if there would be funds available to fund such a study. Uh, because no municipality could meet this, obviously it would have to be independent, um, and uh, it would require money and funds to do so. So um, I remember that. That's where it was left at that meeting was, is that they, the comment was, if, you know, if somebody wants to draft a letter and all the mayors want to sign it, we'll see what we can do. So I just said, look, you're not going to get anybody to, to draft and sign it unless you think there is some funding in it. And it's going to be sort of an independent, non-binding type of situation. So very much in sync with what you're saying. And it was sort of interesting the timing of that because the yeah. NHEDC really is not aware that the mayors were sitting in a room, sort of almost coinciding that that conversation was going on there while it was going on in ours. And uh, I brought it up a couple of times because the understanding of what the hub of bankrupt means to the region. You know, uh, so both treaties. And the little gas station in Cohill, they're gone. 
no, no gas. You cannot, you cannot now get gas on 62 Highway between, you know, M and MSO and Maybach. There's nowhere to get gas. And so the conversation was, do you like the franchise is not going to come to a community of 600 people, but would they come to a region of 7,500 people? Likely. I mean, that's Trudy's is like a perfect spot for an ultramar for that kind of a setup. But it's difficult to attract big business when you have so such a small population. And you know, the same with the Cohill conversation. Nobody in Cohill can get gas. Now you, now you leave Axley and you gotta get all the way up to Nagar, you gotta get all the way to Madoff if you're gonna find gas somewhere. So that's really where the conversation landed and it started, you know, a little while I brought it up actually a little while ago within the group and as I said, a couple of years ago, I was told, oh, yeah, this is not the right place for that conversation. And I said, yeah, fair enough. Well, all I'm going to do is bring it up. This time, it's been embraced actually far more than I would have ever expected. Well, I think you're correct. Everybody's seeing the dramatic price increase. And not just on operating, but as I alluded in my opening remarks, their capital is lower right now because the cost of anything from new trucks to water towers to you name it is. Astronomical and it's hitting everywhere, and the, 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 hitting the real small communities really hard because they don't have really any avenues or tax base to, uh, to approach it. So, I think you know, we enjoyed from 2008 to you know, COVID that uh, ultra low inflation, ultra low interest rates, and the world has changed and we're now into a different environment of uh, uh, you know, more normal interest rates and um, inflation that's uh, still high. And, and the comment that it can't come from one municipality alone, I think, is the only way it really works. It needs to be an understanding that everybody's in the same space. Yes. So, you know, I think having an outside committee uh, is one of the ways to sort of have some yeah. reasonable dialogue in that without, you know, putting one municipality on the hot seat during the whole conversation. Yeah. The um, snowshoe thing that went down was super successful. Oh, they had a lot of, yeah, 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 they uh, had really good turnout, um, and uh, they were really happy about it. And it wouldn't surprise me one bit to see it running in there. Yes, yeah, so that's not a bad thing. Next item we have here, which we have is the Faraday Bank of Waste Management Board, which we have not had a meeting yet, so we don't have to say anything as uh, George. Um, okay, but you can if you would like to inside <laughs> here. But uh, <laughs> uh, we're extremely busy with the budget process right now, and we need to regroup and get our own heads around, around it before we see what's going on. And have heard with it, uh, maybe some changes coming at the third day. But if you'd like to say something, please go ahead. I, I received a copy of the agreement that we had on third day, right. and I reviewed it. and. Uh, Talk to you about it a lot of time, and I think I think it, we need to come up with a, a strategy. Uh, perhaps it has to be in closed session uh, to have a plan to approach fair day, uh, and that can be done, I guess, when we have a joint session with the council. Yeah, as I say, I think we we haven't got our heads around it as of as yeah. yet. The agreement is old, as you say, um, and uh, time has marched on, and the site is still going. So, yeah, we, we need to do some work on that. And the deputy mayor did speak to the mayor out there today, and just sort of you know, said, you know, maybe it's time we had to look at it uh, again. That was when we had the we're down to the yeah, yeah, when we had the mayor's meeting. There, so, yeah, we. Uh, we will try to help with that as soon as we uh, get through this, the budget process, et cetera. So, great. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, can you spell the doc for it? We, we had a meeting. Um, basically, it was just kind of getting everybody familiarized with how it works and, and meeting all the new board members. Um, we appointed the chair to the cease trial from Highlands East. And passed the budget, which I don't know if I'll be that because we've got Alan Rudd, and we haven't received any of the minutes from that. We'll get those sent off to them or we'll give them more information. But I know they uh, have a nice piece of reserve, so, okay. so that's good. So it keeps getting kind of transferred to capital, so they're confident in the future they can see damages. 
variations of them. Um, uh, not a whole lot right at the moment. Okay. And IMG Bank Crossing Area Community Policing Advisory Committee. Yeah, we have a meeting, uh, I guess it's a month ago, we had some order meeting. We had a, we had a, some new members on that board, so we also invited the uh, the person from the Assistant General's office to make a presentation so that new members would know what's happening with, with the governance model. And uh, so there's what is happening with the governance model? They, <laughs> well, they, they, as they said, they said the COVID and number of other things. They're a little, little behind, <laughs> but uh, they hope to have it. Hope to have it up and running before the end of 23. So we'll see. You and I attended a meeting was in December of 19. Yeah. When it was imminent. So, yeah. So, okay. so things changed, yeah. but uh, the, the, the problem is still bringing in with it, and uh, all of the English founders work out of this attachment have approved it, and the musical role of sitting on the I mean, it's over the port, so we so see, and we did a little bit of business, but hopefully with the city tax and commander, he uh, told us really what's happening and what's going on, and, and uh, I think they've had a number of new uh, recruits come to Bancroft in addition to the last one. So, that's it. Uh, so, I kind of Motion to accept the verbal reports on item C through G, please. By the mover and second, I'm going to ask you to be given and get given on the paper. So, pass them. Uh, item 13. Pardon me? Five minutes Let's have a five minute break. Uh, five minute break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coffee is ready.
Okay. Okay, we were reconvened, please. Item 13, unfinished business. I see none. Item 14, business arrived, notice of motion. I see none. Item 15, business. A file number B622 and file 722, white condition 7 and 9, and provisional consent. Motion before us to be resolved the Council Corporation of Town and Bank. I hereby accept title and assume as common and public highway that part of lots 23 and 24, concession 5, geographic township of Dungan, now Town and Bancroft, County of Hastings, being more particularly described as parts 3 and 4, plan 21R 26312, misery known as Upper Turret Road, and further be resolved that the Council of Corporation of Town and uh, Bancroft enter into a development agreement with Stephen Douglas White and Beverly K. White to implement the recommendations under impacts and recommendations of the scope environment, environmental impact study completed by KMU Inc. dated December 15, 2020. Try to a mover and a seconder. Please, Councillor Eastman and Councillor Barry McGibbon. Father, would you give us a little, refresh our memory and give us a little background on this, please? Certainly. Through you, Your Worship, uh, consent files B622 and B722 uh, were pro provisionally approved on May 4th, 2022, to create two non farm residential lots. The new lots are 7.4 acres and 9.1 acres in area, respectfully, and are located on the north side of Upper Turf Road with water frontage on Gaffney Lake. In order to finalize the consent, the applicants are required to complete all conditions of provisional consent by May 5th, 2024. A uh, number of conditions uh, are to be completed with the municipality, including condition number seven, which requires that an Ontario land surveyor provide proof of title and confirm the minimum width of the upper turf road across the entire frontage of the proposed retained and severed lands. The road width uh, was found to be deficient, therefore the applicants are required to transfer parts three and four on plan 21R26312 to the town of Bancroft by registered transfer deed to provide the required width. A copy of the plan is attached to the report and the bylaw to accept title and assume the subject parts has been prepared and is presented as bylaw number 24 2023 on today's agenda to be adopted by council. Condition number nine um, is to be satisfied and which requires the applicants to enter into a development agreement with the town of Bancroft. The purpose of the development agreement is to implement the recommendations of the scoped environmental impact statement that was completed by KBN Inc. The scoped EIS uh, identified development envelopes for each of the proposed lots to limit potential negative impacts to the deer yarding habitat. The suitable development envelopes are identified on the site natural heritage features figure, which is attached to the report, and the impact and recommendations of the EIS are provided in Schedule B of the development agreement and have also been included um, with this report. The bylaw to authorize the town to enter into the development agreement is presented on today's agenda as bylaw number 25, 2023. The development agreement is to be duly registered upon the title of the subject lands and the applicant is responsible for all fees related to the preparation and registration of the said agreement. Staff recommend that council accept title and assume as common and public highway those lands described as parts three and four on plan 21R26312 to satisfy condition seven of consent and further recommend that council enter into the development agreement with the applicants to satisfy condition nine of provisional consent. And that concludes my report, your worship. Thank you, are there any questions? All in favor? So passed, thank you, Robert. Item B, baby call for dad awareness ribbons. Would you like to speak to this? Is this you? So just wrote a brief report because the initial person who came to me didn't want to come speak to council as a delegation. They just wanted it submitted on their behalf. So 
baseball for dad was essentially to act as a stigma breaker for mental health awareness and uh, just kind of a feel good, warm and fuzzy thing to remind people that it's such a difficult time that you are going to be okay. Uh, so yeah, they just wanted to include wherever council would like uh, these warm fuzzy messages on baseball stitching parts uh, and lots of green ribbons around town to raise awareness. Thank you, sir. I'll read the resolution. So be it resolved that the council and the corporation, the town of Bangkok, permit baseball for dad volunteers to place green awareness ribbons and laminated cards in town facilities on light poles within the downtown area from April 29, 2023 until May 31st, 2022. Mover and a seconder phase. Council of Canada, Council of Tracy and given all in favor. Thank you. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm fully in favor of this. Uh, will those dates conflict with any of the downtown construction? Smack in the middle of it. Oh, gracious. Yes. So, I'm thinking that it may not be able to happen right in the downtown on those poles, because they're temporary poles and they're going to be moving and changing. We can but, bridge and station. Yeah. So, what if we encourage our downtown businesses to put one in the window? That would be awesome. Yeah. Okay, great. So, I, I right, we probably don't need to say any further. I just thought. Tiny light poles will be very uh, disruptive for them as well as construction. So, great idea. Do we need to deliver that to them? So, I will all let them know that it was a the council. Um, and they had just asked kind of generally if they could place them where council allows them to place them. Um, so, we'll just make a note that we have construction and I'm sure they'll be using it. Uh, you did yeah. say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they intend to do stuff at the community centers and put them up on the board and stuff. Good point. Good point. Thank you. Uh, we did pass it. I staff report, treasurer, uh, council remuneration. I'll read the motion first. It is resolved that the council corporation, town of Bangkok, is hereby received and filed the council remuneration report as presented that mover and a second your pages. My council Tracy McGibbon and deputy mayor. I see Wendland is on the screen. This is a, requir a reporting requirement, correct, Wendland? Yes, it's a yearly requirement uh, by the province that this has to be posted and approved by council each year before March 31st. Okay. Any questions? All in favor, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Okay, the next one is a long one. So it's a housing and homelessness call to action. And I will read the, the motion that says here. Whereas the homeless, homeless crisis is taking a devastating toll on families and communities, undermining a healthy and prosperous Ontario. Whereas the homelessness crisis is a result of underinvestment and poor policy choices of successive provincial governments. Whereas homelessness requires a range of housing, social services and health solutions from government, whereas homelessness is felt most at the level of local government and the residents that they serve, whereas municipalities and district social administration boards are, are doing their part and do not have the resources, capacity or tools to address this complex challenge, and whereas leadership and urgent action is needed from the provincial government on an emergency basis to develop resource and implement a comprehensive plan to prevent, reduce, and ultimately end homelessness in Ontario. Therefore, it be resolved that the town of Bangkok calls the provincial government to urgently a acknowledge that homelessness is in Ontario is a social, economic, and health crisis. B commit to ending homelessness in Ontario. C work with CAMO Association of Colleges in Ontario and a broad range of community health indigenous and economic partners to develop resources and, and implement an action plan to achieve this goal and further that a copy of this motion be sent to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services, the Minister of Health and to the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. Moved by Councillor Tracy McGill and seconded by uh, Councillor Kavanaugh. So, was this verbatim from the email? It is. Yeah. Okay, I just see they did not mention the Minister of Mental Health and Addiction. It comes yeah. under the Minister, it's a subset of the group. 
uh, Ministry of Health. And I don't remember where I, there have been a number of uh, there, uh, up above there. There's some letters there that came from Belleville, Coburg, Niagara region. It's everywhere. It's affecting everybody. Uh, as I've mentioned in the past, the um, large mayor's caucus, which is municipalities over 100,000, requested an urgent meeting last August, I believe it was, with the province. I don't think they ever received a response. Um, we, uh, Town of Bancroft, met with the Minister of Health, the Minister of Mental Health and Addiction. I think that was in 2021 before the election. It was in 2020. 2020. 2020. And uh, the Minister of Mental Health and Addiction, he promised he was going to come here. Uh, we, followed, we followed up with letters and never received anything else. Here. So we have certainly advocated on our part to continue to do so. I'm very happy to see that uh, AMO is taking this up as well now, as well. And yeah, and as I mentioned, my opening words are housing. There's all different types of housing. It's not just the you know the bungalow that, that everybody lives in. It's all different types. And um, it's not mentioned in here, but you know there's been a lot of work and research done on these sort of the housing first uh, notion and. Uh, a lot of people believe that that is, you know, where a large part of the solution does lie. So we certainly feel it here in our municipality. We see it. We see it on the streets. I know, Tracy, you see it. We see it in the uh, our policing costs. Um, I know other the hospital sees it in their costs, and everybody's seeing it. There's costs everywhere. So we're already bearing the cost of this. And if we were to be able to eliminate those other costs and divert that money to proper programs, I think we'd be far ahead. And that's been argued large, loud and clear, but so far the promise doesn't even, has, doesn't speak about it, doesn't acknowledge that this exists. So hence the motion that we have here. Any comments from anybody else? All in favor. So fast. Notice the motion then. Uh, consent. Agenda approval by consent agenda being resolved with the items listed under the consent agenda. Item 17B. The 17B be received by the corporation town of Bancroft for information purposes only. As is our practice, we can chat about any of these, but if there's anything that is requiring action, it's that we need to pull it out. And if there is anything there, okay, seeing none. Um, over the secondary on that please. Councillor Miles, Councillor Eastman. Is there, is there anything here that anybody would like to uh, chat on? Since you don't, I don't. Um, first of all, um, item C under government organizations. Item one, Hastings County CO recruitment. Everybody's probably aware, uh, Jim Klein, who has been with the county for a number of years, um, is departing in June, I believe, and the search is currently on for a new uh, CAO. I do sit on the um, selection committee, but once it's narrowed down, it will go to all the county council uh, for, uh, for uh, unanimous acceptance. Um, item two, I see we're now including the council, Hastings County Council reports. Um, a lot of people aren't familiar with exactly what the county does. I really do recommend that they read this. You know, it talks about uh, community human services, i.e. social services, um, long-term care, and the paramedic uh, services as well, all which are facing Big challenges tomorrow will be a budget meetings all day covering these. I've already seen some of the numbers of the uh, budget increases that are being proposed, and they are large. They are very large. Cost of an ambulance has almost doubled in the last number of years, if you can get one. You know, so there is a lot of uh, a lot of pressures on there. Um, is there something else? Uh, no, that was all that I wanted to talk to you on that one. So, uh, item D, Bill 23, 
So Bill 23, which of course is the, you know, the more homes uh, built faster act, which, which has had a lot of extreme controversy over it. There was actually a very interesting report, I think it was on CBC the other day, that said there is enough, it was CBC report, I think, but there is enough approved housing that if it was built, would basically satisfy 70% of the goal of what this particular act is. Because the argument for many municipalities is we don't need this, there's enough land already within the areas. What we need is for developers to build what's been approved. And part B is um, for the actual processes that exist now to get an approval to have them streamlined. But again, that's not always. There is massive. <laughs> must have, he must have known what I was talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, so there, there's a feeling that they're not, that nobody's really convinced what this legislation is going to do because it's going to take a number of years before it happens. And there already exists uh, other ways to, uh, to do this. And of course, there is a lot of talk as well about the change, uh, change or elimination of development charges uh, as part of this, which is supposed to be for affordable housing, but it's very unclear. There's a lot of confusion. On that, and I need their bill twenty. Uh, there's a municipal letter from the municipality of West Nipissing, which you know basically opposed to it. Uh, there's a lot of people that are opposed to it for many reasons. I'm not saying it couldn't work, but there was really not a whole, there was not a whole lot of consultation. Put into it, so anyway, that is that. So um, all in favor of the cons that step in the consent agenda. Thank you. Community announcements and events. Um, George. Uh, as you, you may or may not know, the uh, upcoming tournament, hockey tournament this weekend, uh, sponsored by the Rex Park Partners out of Bancroft. <clears throat> there are uh, currently 15 teams uh, that will be playing that tournament. Uh, seven of the Rec Division. Uh, <coughs> Four in the uh, plus 45 division and four in the plus 60 division. So <clears throat> it's uh, 26 hours of ice uh, sold at the arena this weekend, which is very good. And uh, like any other, <coughs> I'm sorry, any other event coming to town, economic input into the town uh, really can't be measured, but we all know what's there. Uh, with all these families coming back. Uh, many of them couldn't come at Christmas time because of the solar storm, of course. Uh, some of them coming back the first time with their families to see the in-laws, the outlaws. But, uh, you know, there's going to be lots of foods, food at the grocery stores uh, sold. There's going to be lots of restaurants uh, going to be busy. Uh, our our uh, public establishments are going to be busy as well. Uh, they're going to be buying gas. They're going to be doing a lot of things in town. So, Women are going to be shopping in between the games. So, again, there's an uh, economic impact, impact there, although uh, we can't really measure it, but no one's there. Uh, so, again, it's this weekend, it starts Friday night, and goes all, all the way through, starts again at 9 o'clock Saturday, and it'll go through uh, to uh, 6 o'clock on Sunday. Thank you. Anyone else have anything? Uh, just some museum updates. We'd like to be open mid April. We are redoing many of our space, uh, updating many things. So, hope to have you over for mid April. Digital Main Street, the BIA OBI uh, initiative, is uh, on the go again. Fourth year, going into four, three years, successfully uh, leading the needs of the business people in town. So, I'd like to get on board and uh, take advantage. Yes, it's not an event that well, I think it needs to be an event. Let's put it that way. When our main street is finished, we need to close it down some Friday night and do something big to celebrate the fact that we have a brand new, beautiful main street. So, good thought. So, well, every year we, we used to have the uh, car show downtown. Why don't we do that? We could. 
Um, yeah, you probably would probably need to go to the fall as opposed to. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but good idea. So remind us. Hey, Michelle. Okay. Okay. The other thing too that we we spoke so to a years ago before COVID was and I think we we forgot about it is the fact that when we moved into this building and we did the building we were going to have an open house as well and we never had that right. with this building and with the mineral building is going to take care as well. Yeah. There's just so many things to do. <laughs> no. No, and you're right, this is, gosh, it's been years since COVID now, so, yeah. And uh, I know we haven't seen it here, but uh, Ottawa, Burlington, et cetera, there's big outbreaks going on in Burlington, Toronto, so yeah, so it's, you know, you know it's, it may have subsided, but it has not disappeared. As of yet, so, okay. Thank you. Um, Bylaws, first, second, and third reading. We resolve the following bylaws being reduced to the first, second, and third time be finally passed, and that the mayor and clerk do sign and seal the same A rule of this council. To the contrary, notwithstanding, bylaw number 23 2023, a bylaw to amend comprehensive zoning bylaw number 27 2006, as amended. Bylaw number 24 2023, being a bylaw assuming. Uh, as a common and public highway, that part of Moss 23 and 24 concession by a geographic township of Vendana, now town of Bank, now county of Basin, is more particularly described hereafter. Bylaw number 25 2023, being a bylaw to authorize the corporation of town of Bank to enter into the development agreement with Stephen Douglas White and Beverly K. White. Bylaw number 26 2023, being a bylaw to amend Schedule 1 to bylaw number 11. Dash 2017 being a bylaw to establish a schedule of retention periods for book records. Bylaw number 27 2023 being a bylaw to prohibit temporary patio extensions in the town of Bancroft. And bylaw number 28 2023 being a bylaw to amend Schedule A to bylaw number 93 2022. Being the administrative monetary penalty system bylaw. Can I go over in a second, please? Uh, Councilor Miles, Councilor Kavanaugh, is there any question on that? I do have one. Could, could I just get some clarification? Uh, because I've seen it reported, I was not at the, at the meeting regarding the uh, temporary patio extensions, what that actually means. Yes. Uh, so there was a lot of misinformation online. <laughs> A lot. Yes. Um, so all it is is specifically patios which are licensed by the AGCO, which are temporary alcohol serving drinking patios, temporary not permanent. So that won't change anything to do with our regular uh, like going to granite or anywhere else. Uh, it's only for a temporary extension to the license the AGCO. So uh, so if somebody has a is allowed to do it through the licensing board. We're saying that they can't do it as well. So the licensing board has given that requirement to municipalities. Okay. So what they've done is if you are a permanent patio, they license it through the AGCO. If you're temporary indoor, they license it through the AGCO. If you're temporary outdoor, we have to license it. So what are we actually prohibiting? So us doing the licensing Because we don't have the stock resources, because there's so many issues with zoning, because there's so many different Assets that we just don't physically have a way to manage. It just doesn't make sense for the time of day. And there really isn't anything in town. I think we had I had one email that made a request for it, uh, but that's someone who could still, if they wanted to, do minor variants for it, or they could do a permanent patio extension. There's lots of options. I guess I'm curious well, why was what was the need for it this final? Because we are forced to license it. Uh, by the AGCO, and we had a request as to whether or not we would or wouldn't, and we had no bylaws to do a temporary patio extension. Okay, so that means we could never have a temporary patio extension, or can somebody still come and request? I, I, I guess I'm losing. So this this prohibits it entirely as a temporary AGCO license, like a liquor licensed patio. We could always amend the bylaw in the future, or we could choose not to pass this bylaw now. Um, the conversation that with 
have an account uh, was that everyone was in agreement that we would bring this forward as a prohibiting by law. Um, yeah, I guess I'm, I wasn't there, so excuse me. I think the, the gist of the whole discussion was it really didn't affect anyone. And it doesn't really. In, in our area. No, but it's but the way it's being portrayed and the way you read on the media, it's as if we're not allowing them for patterns. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only the liquor license. Yeah, liquor license. Outdoor temporary, temporary is the word. Yes. So this is take the two chairs and the little table out of your store or shop and put them on the sidewalk and serve a beer. You can't do that. That's, that's what we're saying. So we don't have the ability to license and control those. But if it's on their own property, then it's not a problem. On their own property as a permanent patio, they can apply through the agency to receive a license. On their own property as a temporary patio, they would not be able to receive a license to us. The way I understood it, though, is it not basically just closing the door that this COVID opened? Yes, because people couldn't have that capacity inside; they needed to survive. They're doing it outside. Exactly. And actually, the same day that we had to be in the hole, there was one municipality who passed their own temporary extension bylaw, um, and that was Peterborough. But they adjusted it to where they only allowed that, from my understanding, when they closed their roads. So when they closed a full street corner, um, that was where they were allowing that to happen. But it didn't look like anything else. So if you go to Ottawa or Toronto, you will see where they've actually taken up part of the lane, you know, the bike lane, and they've created patios, and it's been a huge success, and it continued with that. So does that mean with this type of thing, we could never do that? This we, that. we could still do because there was conversation about this. You could still do beer tents and that sort of thing where you get your own special occasion license. I mean, municipalities can apply to your special occasion. So if you had uh, like a celebration that you wanted to do where you're closing the portion of the road or you're doing it in those like lanes, you could still do that. I, I was there, so I have to rely on counsel on this one, but um, yeah, it seems to be, I don't know why it's not sitting well with me. I think the optics, when this came out, because I saw some of the posts and some of the messaging that occurred, uh, put us as if we were trying to shut down business. But three years ago, it's exactly what we had. So clearly nothing changed. Only COVID changed how this conversation went. So this is a perception of the optics, you think? Well, not really. COVID opened the door to a lot of things. We never had video meetings before. That's true. We never had... We never were allowed to do this before, so COVID has changed the world for a lot of beneficial ways. So just because it was done some way before, if, it, if it's good for the area and it's good for promoting tourism and everything else, you know. So I, I guess I'm just still confused on it. Like this. So you know, to me, if, why couldn't you just uh, you could make an application and you can say no. Okay. But this is not preventing you from even, I guess we don't even have an application to see if you're in it. Um, so. Can we defer it until we do come up with a policy or a bylaw or something that. Again, I'm not trying to trump if you guys already looked at this and, and, and came to some sort of consensus, but I've been trying to wrap my head around this since I've been reading about it. Anyway. So I can give you a little bit of background too on creating if we were to create something, a policy for this. Uh, so I. I looked at a whole pile of different bylaws that were in existence during COVID, not post COVID, uh, for how people were licensing it before they were uh, allowing people to do it with the agency that was doing the actual official licensing for it. So, what becomes part of those requirements is having uh, fire inspection. So, you know, fire prevention officer would have to go out and do periodic uh, inspections. We'd have to have our CDO or our law enforcement officer go out and do periodic inspections as well as a person licensed in the patio. Uh, would have to meet all the accessibility requirements. There's very extensive work would have to go into creating that. Uh, and that's not to say what do you want to do, do this without a you can do that. You can, I can do, do it. it. You can do it without it. So I think the messaging. Yeah, yes. I think the messaging hasn't been very good on this. I think the messaging needs to be revamped on this. You know, that alcohol prevents it requires a whole bunch of things, and, and it's up to us now to yes. make sure they'll be satisfied. But if you have patios um, such as the brew pub has, like how is is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's a permanent It's just if someone's going to barricade part of their parking lot and do something with alcohol in that, then that's where this is stopping. Yeah. 
Yeah, I just think the messaging on this hasn't been. Perhaps if you hear the messaging. I heard it on the radio and it was loud and clear. And then the next time I heard it on the radio, it was completely yes, all watch, you know. So yeah. and I read it online and I thought, oh, you know, so. Um, <clears throat> Could we do a post on Facebook that kind of explained that? To say basically we're shutting the door on what COVID has allowed now, we're going back to the way it was pre COVID. Well, I, again, I don't know if I agree with that comment because COVID. You know, there's been some side benefits to it. If it was good, why would you just get rid of it? Because COVID is, is gone. If there's, you know, but we never used to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, we, we weren't allowed to in the past to get a patio like the group I've had in the past was very difficult. And uh, they, whatever the licensing agreement was that allowed them, they're there. And what you see that patio got people at it all the time. So that's a permanent patio, and I think this this one speaks to the impact on staff. I think that's sort of the, the focus of the way in which I interpret so what you said last time. It, it has to do with temporary alcohol on, on municipal property, as well as on private property. So that if you have you have a liability in this way, if it's on municipal property, if you have on um, having dealt with wheels, water, and wings, and having dealt with patios that tried to spring up at that point in time, the difficulties that that's consumed. So that was my interpretation of it, that it's the impact on staff, the amount of work, et cetera, that we have to go into and the liability aspect. So how would you handle it? Like, let's take wheels, bar, and wings. How would you handle patio in that particular case? Special event. Special event. It's a special event. So as a result of that, 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 that you could say a loophole. It's not a loophole. It's, it's an advantage that people have who are applying to do. So that could be mentioned in it then. I think this all needs to be really clarified, you know, because you know, so it, it doesn't does affect it? temporary occasion permits. Permit. Now, if somebody wanted to create a permanent patio, I don't know if there's nothing no. yeah. wrong with that How? license by AGC. There is no problem at all. It's temporary. See, but if you were to take the messaging, that's not, and I'm not saying it's what we've said. The interpretation yeah. is almost like patio or van. No, 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 no. Well, I'm not saying that, but that's what the message. That's what. But, but, that, but that's, that's not what we used to do. The messaging. Well, then. The committee of the whole. The committee of the whole was very clear. It was temporary. It was an impact on the size of the And it, and it, uh, there was an opportunity for special events, special event occasions for people to go ahead, and it had no effect whatsoever on the permanent values of the granite. And the, and the I, so I think we need to clarify that. I'm fine. So Tracy has suggested you can finish so that. Does that make sense? Well, we can pass as well, and then the direction is that to prepare, you know, proper communicate to go with us. I think people just get excited with their reading, like temporary. <laughs> yeah, but, temporary. Uh, that, is, that tells but, you that it's not even this, this, or this. So I'm, I'm going to play the devil's advocate. I was not at the meeting. I read what came up on post and online. No, for sure. And then I'm, I'm still, and I, and I still mm -hmm. talk about it, and I go, I thought we were trying to come you know, yeah, things. No, no. so yeah, yeah, yeah. but so uh, if, if I read it that way, then everybody else who wasn't at the meeting would read it, yeah. could read it the same way, and that wasn't our release, that's the way that it was reported. So, yeah, that's right. Okay, so, well, we so we need to control the message, that's right? We need to control that, we need to control the message. So I'm, I'm okay if you yeah. pass it, yeah. we follow up with a proper delivery yeah. fan, we'll pass yeah. it. Oh, yeah. thank you. Sure. Yes. Before we want, I think we should go back and bring up the job fair. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to over the job fair, and I think it's something important we should throw sure. away. that? It's up during the community announcement. It's just a little tiny little line. Boy, quickly. Oh, I didn't see it there. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. So that was going back to eighteen ninety-seven. Yeah. 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 well, somebody else has to be thinking of the money from up on the street. <laughs> it's, it's a posting from Loyalists that they are running a job fair from May the 28th uh, from 1 to 5 p.m. at their uh, location here at 195 AC Street North. They post it up here. They have uh, over a wide range of jobs available and take an opportunity to get your path going, your career path. So uh, they are running a Facebook page for anybody looking for one. It's March 28th, 1 to 5. That's all for uh, open session. So uh, let's take five before we go into it. Well, you need to move in.
Yeah, okay. Yeah. Can we then we can take a recess right after that? Okay, so moving to closed session, we resolve the Council of Corporation Town of Bangkok. We said I moved to closed session for the Municipal Act, SO 2001, Section 239 2F, advice that it's subject to solicit client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. Legal matters pertaining to HR, can I move around the second year, please? Councillor Chavanagh, Councillor Kerry, Stephen Hibben, all in favor. Thank you. Now we'll take the time. So, we do that celebration of we should do it for your Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs>